is up you guys welcome back to another one if you're new to this channel i'm bull pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we're in the brand new 2023 mercedes-benz e450 coupe courtesy of mercedes-benz of hagerstown in hagerstown maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so today we're in this one because this is an absolutely gorgeous coupe right now this is an amazing looking vehicle and metallic paints are now standard for the 2023 model year so that's essentially what's new for this year but this one did just arrive so ultimately we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing so essentially there are two different configurations for the e450 you got the rear wheel drive configuration starting at sixty nine thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars then you got the formatic all-wheel drive which is the one we have today starting at seventy two thousand two hundred and fifty dollars but regardless of the configuration that you go with the power plant is going to be the same powering the beast is a three liter turbocharged inline six cylinder that's pretty cool 362 horsepower at 5500 rpm 369 pound feet of torque coming in at 1600 rpm that power sent to the rear wheels or all wheels through a nine speed automatic with paddle shifters zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 5.2 seconds for the rear wheel drive 4.9 seconds for the all wheel drive with mpg numbers coming in at 23 city 30 on the highway for the rear wheel drive 21 in the city still 30 on the highway though for the all wheel drive taking premium unleaded fuel and so before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in our e450 coupe wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes there's a button labeled dynamic it stands for dynamic select it's kind of a toggle switch located just to the left of the touchpad controller when you hit that you can adjust between eco comfort sport sport plus and individual adjusting things like the shift points a throttle response steering sensitivity and the air suspension which doesn't come standard but it is optional on the e450 cube so i wanted to mention that but now i've got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find straight away let's put the paddle shifters and acceleration here to the test let's see how quickly the paddle shifters are going to react for us and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2023 e450 coupe here up to speed all right second gear all right let's go whoa this thing's quick <laughs> this thing is fun this thing is fun man paddle shifters are pretty darn quick as well but that acceleration that's what puts a smile on your face it's a lot quicker than i thought it was gonna be so definitely a lot of respect for the acceleration in the e coupe here so wonderful anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important so as expected you will find a performance oriented braking system perforated front disc with six piston front calipers including that mercedes-benz lettering of course that looks so dang good as far as the 60 zero stopping distance goes actually comes in at 127 feet which on paper is not the best quite honestly i expect it better but let me go ahead and hit the brakes just to test it braking feel is fine it is a little bit on the softer side of things i will say that but the braking feel is fine i certainly personally wouldn't have any issues with the brakes on this thing then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get an independent four link front axle in the back independent five arm multi-link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars but you also get an adaptive damping suspension and this is one i always like to recommend when it doesn't come standard release which it does on the eq because it's essentially monitor each shock absorber individually not only adjusting to the road imperfections giving you a smoother ride but it also tightens up that suspension during heavy cornering really giving you the best of both worlds so for that reason ride quality has been perfectly fine on my short little test drive here today definitely not having any issues there but i did want to mention there is an optional air suspension like i mentioned at the beginning of the video there that goes for 1900 by the way but that is really ultimately going to give you the very best ride quality so that is what you want if you want the best ride quality as far as steering feel goes it's fine it's definitely weighted on the heavier side of things not too heavy it's honestly just perfect or just right for the e-coupe so no issues there as far as cabin noise goes we're going five miles per hour right now and there isn't a whole lot of wind noise coming in i'm just kidding you guys honestly the cab noise at 55 is dang good as well it's definitely a very serene cabin as you would come to expect from mercedes-benz of course and touching our rear visibility it's perfectly fine honestly some coupes you do have issues with rear visibility but that's not the case in the e450 cube so definitely no issues there either and if you wanted a head-up display projecting your speed speed limit and safety features up onto your windshield that is available 
for $1,100 if you wanted to go that route. But as we are sitting in construction right now, that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 Mercedes-Benz E450 Coupe. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2023 Mercedes-Benz E450 Coupe finished in Manufacture Moonlight White Metallic, which is a $1,750 paint option. I do like it, though. If you get up close, you can definitely see the metallic flake in it, so definitely a very nice look. But again, metallic paint is now standard on the E Coupe, whereas it was not in the previous model year, so I do want to emphasize that. But as always, let's go ahead and start with where this one is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the letter W, indicating that the E Coupe is built and assembled in Germany. So that is pretty cool. So starting up front here, diamond block front grille will come standard. That comes with a dark finish. It's gonna be the standard setup. However, there is a chrome diamond block front grille that you guys are currently looking at. That comes standard with the AMG line packages. There are two of them and that definitely adds a more aggressive front fascia, which you guys are looking at right now as well. So satin chrome front lip will come standard on this one. To the sides, LED headlights with LED daytime running lights. Also get the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark and at night, these headlights will turn on automatically for you there. But also to go along with that, automatic high beam. So if you have your high beams on at night, and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim them back to low beams. Then when that vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically then bounce it back up to high beams for you. So definitely a very nice convenience feature there as well but overall very nice looking front end as always but now let's go and make our way to my favorite part which is the side of the e450 coupe all right, so we're now making our way to the side of this one. Chrome window surrounds will come standard, but one of the coolest parts, frameless door glass for the front and rear windows, meaning they will go down completely. So that is a pretty cool look. That's something Mercedes-Benz does and has done in the past, and I've always liked the look of that. But anyways, body color, power adjustable side mirrors will come standard that will be heated with LED integrated turn signals, and they will also be power folding, as you would expect for Mercedes-Benz, of course. You do also have some chrome accenting found on the door handles to tie together with chrome accenting found around the window surrounds there and then take a look down at the wheel setup 18 inch twin five spoke alloys will come standard 19 inch amg specific alloys are going to come with the amg line packages and i i love the look of amg wheels they're always so unique but that is what you guys are looking at of course and then of course there are 19 and 20 inch wheel designs available to really make this one your own but anyways that pretty much rounds out the side profile let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right so but now since you are around to the back first thing i always typically mention is a shark fin antenna however in typical mercedes fashion there is none of that so a very clean look up top on the roof of the e-class here definitely like that but rear spoiler is going to be available you guys are looking at that that goes for 350 dollars if you wanted that option there is a center high mount stop lamp as well there are led taillights so a little added illumination at night there like that and just below it all you're going to find integrated dual exhaust outlets with satin chrome tips and yes i love that they're integrated into the rear bumper also a big fan of that matte black rear diffuser back there as well but having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip It's open now since we are around to the back of the E-Class Coupe here. When it comes to opening that rear trunk, there's several different ways to go ahead and do that. There's, of course, a button on the key fob. There's a button on the driver's side door. But my favorite way is the hidden way where you press in on the upper portion of the Mercedes logo in the back there. And, of course, it's going to automatically then open up for you because it is a power trunk that comes standard on this thing. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 10 cubic feet even. If that was not enough space, there are some levers back there. You can fold the rear seats down. There's a 40-20-40 split meaning that's a ton of extra space then if you needed it. There is some cargo lighting back there. There are cargo tie-down anchors as well. A little bit of netted storage to the sides. To my surprise, there's actually a little fold-down grocery bag hook, so you got kind of places to hang your groceries on both sides there. Then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you will find a little bit of in-floor storage, maybe enough for an ice scraper or something like that. But anyways, then making our way up to the rear legroom. That comes in at 35.9 inches. So for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there and quite honestly 35.9 inches for a 2 plus 2 
is dang impressive, if I'm being honest. That is a good bit of space for a two-door coupe. So, well done Mercedes for pulling that off, but there is some cup holders back there, of course, there's rear ventilation and a couple of phone charging ports back there then as well. But then, making our way up to the front seats, power adjustable front seats with four-way power lumbar does come standard. Memory settings for both the driver and passenger come standard as well. That's pretty cool. Leather seating coming standard, heated front seats coming standard. If you want ventilated front seats though, that goes to $450. And another option you might want to check out is multi-contour front seats with the massage function. So yes, you can get a massage in this thing for an additional $950 if you wanted to go that route. But Overall seating was plenty comfortable for me. I love the vertical seams as well. That's something I always gripe on in other reviews that I do. When you got the horizontal seams, you got awkward pressure points, but with vertical seams, it's a lot comfier, comparatively speaking to the horizontal seams. I'm just saying, so no issues there. Then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is gonna be leather wrapped coming standard. I like the perforation on the left and right hand side. It's a flat bottom, which I love as well. And the 10 and two grips are definitely bolstered on the thicker side. So I definitely love that as well. If you wanted to heated steering wheel it goes for 250 dollars but then make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here essentially all of your buttons are located on one side of the key got your mercedes logo front and center but lock on top unlock at the bottom and that button to pop the rear trunk as well but it is all keyless entry with a push button start so all i'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that silver engine start button located just to the left of the air vents there and so once started up, 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster does come standard on this thing. I love that. One of the best parts about the gauges though is if you go all the way to the right, you got a designs and display section where you can choose different loadouts, completely changing the look of the gauges, including classic, sport, progressive, and understated. Understated is kind of funny because it's literally like nothing up on the gauge. It's just the digital readout basically, which is pretty cool. But anyways, if you wanted to completely change the look of your gauges, that's why digital gauges are so important in today's age because you can do it, so why not do it? That's my theory, I absolutely love it. Of course, it gives you outside temperature, how many miles you have left until you hit empty, radio information, when you need your next service, and so on. So pretty much absolutely everything you could possibly want on the gauges, of course. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. A panorama roof does come standard on the E-Coupe, love that. Home light controls also coming standard, and that's for up to three different garage doors, found just below the rear view mirror there. Dual zone climate control coming standard along with 64 colors of ambient lighting. And in typical Mercedes fashion, it's done so incredibly well. And that can be adjusted through the infotainment screen. Uh, we'll check that out in a second here. But several ashwood trim colors are available as well. There's like a light beechwood color. There's this dark mahogany color that we have in this thing. And I always say whenever Mercedes puts wood trim finishes in their vehicles, when you first get into these things, it doesn't smell like a new car. It smells like a new home as if you were just building it from scratch. So I absolutely love the smell of this thing. I gotta say, I like the design of the air vents as well and how they're actually built into the wood trim. I like the color contrast that we have on this one, like the kind of saddle brown with the dark black as well, the leather finishes everywhere. You do have a little bit of storage just in front of the cup holders. There's a phone charging port, 12 volt power outlet, of course your cup holders themselves. And within the center armrest, there's a little bit of storage there and you got a couple more phone charging ports within that as well. So overall, Definitely no issues with the interior quality and you wouldn't expect any when it comes to Mercedes-Benz. You do have an overhead sunglass holder as well in case you're curious. But anyways, now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen. As you would imagine to match the gauges, the infotainment screen is also a 12.3 inch color touchscreen display. And so, like I said, it is touchscreen. You also have this touchpad controller and buttons located just behind your cup holders. That's another way. And you got the awesome functionality by simply saying, hey, Mercedes, how can I help? Turn on the radio and it's on. I just got to turn it up. So I'm just going to turn it up here. Yeah, that's proof. Anyway, so that's pretty darn convenient. I will say that. But anyways, Bluetooth and audio streaming do come standard Android Auto, Apple CarPlay as well. Again, you can check out your ambient lighting settings and all of your different colors up on that screen as well. You got climate control settings up there and you got a cool theme section. If you go back to the home screen and then you kind of swipe up from the bottom, you got trip experience, efficiency and lounge. And what those themes essentially do is change just about everything it changes the ambient lighting colors it can open and close the uh, panorama roof up top here so it does adjust quite a bit actually depending upon the different theme setting that you put it on you don't have to play around with that but it's there for you if you want it but you can also of course check out your radio information up there so when it comes to the standard sound system that is going to be a 13 speaker Burmester surround sound system 
590 watts and nine channel digital amplifier and a subwoofer. And the speaker covers, of course, are finished in aluminum. So very high end. So I love that as well. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio. Let's see what we got playing this morning. And let's test out the clarity of this one. I must say something with this sound system that I don't traditionally say in my other reviews is this one specifically sounded like you were at a concert. It really was coming at you at all ends. The clarity, I believe, in this sound system sounds amazing. Decent amount of bass, not the very most I've heard, but the clarity was 100% on point. That's the part that will blow you away with this particular sound system that we have here. But anyways, last thing I want to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen is when you do put the E-Class in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, but not just that, you're also going to get that panoramic view monitor, the 360 degree view all the way to the left there. That also comes standard on the E-Cube, so you gotta love that, but as always that, is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, I will say that Sedan is an IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus. The coupe has not been tested with IIHS. I would imagine it would be the same thing, but don't quote me on that because it hasn't been tested. But traditionally, Mercedes does make a very safe vehicle, but front side side curtain airbags do come standard. Driver's knee airbag up front as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors to tethers for children for the rear car seats. Tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, Mercedes-Benz emergency call service. So if it senses the airbags go off because somebody hits you or something like that, the car is gonna automatically call you and ask if you need an ambulance or police or anything like that. So that's pretty cool. Active brake assist, blind spot assist, attention assist, cross wind assist, which is a pretty cool feature as well. Parktronic with active parking assist, rear cross traffic alert, and adaptive braking technology as well, which I actually got to test out there during the construction when I went off road to go around the cones. It actually almost stopped for me because I was going off the road, which is kind of cool. But anyways, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the E-Coupe, great looking design. I definitely think Mercedes makes a heck of a good looking coupe without a doubt. Plenty of power in this thing as well. You guys probably remember that acceleration test. That was pretty nuts. Amazing interior quality, amazing ambient lighting. I always say Mercedes-Benz does ambient lighting better than any other manufacturer that I've tested. So that is pretty darn good as well. Very comfortable ride, very serene cabin. That's one of the things that I even noticed even more after I went over that portion of the review initially so very serene cabin in this thing the only room for improvement i guess if you're buying a mercedes maybe it doesn't matter as much to you but this thing does come with quite a bit of options therefore it can get pricey pretty darn quick so a lot of options allow you more customization but it also jacks up the price pretty quick but anyways let me know what you guys think of the e450 coupe in the comment section below and that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold